Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. How do we rule over our spirit? How do we rule over our spirit? We start with Proverbs 25 and 28. This is the scripture that was put on the, uh, the question. Proverbs 25 and verse 28. How do we rule over our spirit? Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 28. He that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So it says if, if you can't, if you don't have no rule over your spirit, you emotional, you every however you feel, that's how you act. However you feel, that's what you do. That's showing that you have no rule over your spirit because you're emotional. You act off your emotions. But it's, so the question is, how do you rule over your spirit? And it says, if you have no, if you have no control over your emotions, because that's what it, when you, if you don't have rule over your spirit, that, that's what it's talking about. You don't have rule over your emotions. Every, if you, if you mad, you gonna act off that anger. If you sad, you gonna act off that sadness. You gonna do, you, you're, you're gonna dictate your actions based off your emotions. That means you don't have no rule over your spirit. Because anybody here know, your emotions are up and down, like a roller coaster. They all over the place. That's what it means. You, it's like a, and it says it's like a city that is broken down and without walls. The walls of a city protect that city from an attack, from an attack from an enemy. So if the walls are broken down, there's no, there's no protection up to protect that city. There's no watchman watching out. So when, when the, when the enemy is coming to attack, there's no, there's no watchman. There's no protection. So when that, that the enemy come through, they coming straight through and they destroy him. Meaning that if you have no control over your spirit, you are gonna have demons on you. You are gonna have legions of spirits on you because every spirit that rise, the lust spirit come. Up, oh, I guess I'm gonna fall into that lust. A co covetous spirit, all the sp any spirit that come up against you, you are gonna act on it. That anger spirit, the uh, adulterous spirit. Anything that come your way, you're going to act on it because you have no walls up. So question, how do we rule our, over our spirit? First, uh, go to uh, Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. This is the first and most important part of ruling your own spirit. It says you meditate in God's laws day and night. Another word for meditate is study. Look at it repetitively. Like a cow chew the cud, you swallow Bring it back up. You observe. You think about it. You meditate on something. You mean if you at work, you're thinking about that scripture. You're thinking about what it means. How can you apply it? It says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. So you studying the, the laws day and night so that you so that you can apply it. So you meditate on it. You're thinking about it, and you're thinking about okay, if I'm you, you giving yourself scenarios and situations. So if you come into those scenarios and situations, you apply the commandment. Uh, then it says, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. We're doing it during this time of Joshua. He was, going, he was going into the land of Canaan to take over the land of Canaan. For he was leading Israel into taking over the land, which was given unto us by the Most High God. But this applies that you shall make your way prosperous and have, you shall have good success. It's talking about the, the stuff that we go go through on a day-to-day -day basis. When you go to work, you're dealing with all type of spirits. You're dealing with Esau. If you study in the commandments, you're going to know how to act accordingly when your spirit is tempted and tested. You tested to get out the spirit at work, you apply God's law. Be at peace with all men. You're studying things that, that you know you battle with. You know you got a quick temper. You know you got a spirit of anger. You should be studying scripture on peace, how to make peace. How to rule over, how to uh, control your anger. The downfalls of acting out in anger. Because when, they, when, you, when you tempted and when you come to that moment of your lust arising to the top and you test it, your patience is tested, are you going to apply the commandments or are you going to 
yield to your carnal your carnal self. You're gonna react, curse somebody out at work. Now you now your job is in jeopardy. So this is the first part. Let's go to uh, Galatians chapter five and verse sixteen. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So it says, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This is how you rule your spirit. Walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. What is the spirit? Uh. It's a law of leadership, uh, the book of John 6, 63. That's good. All right, let's go there. John. What is, the what is the spirit? Chapter 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Uh -huh. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So we know that Christ, the words that Christ spoke to the disciples was God's laws. So we know that the spirit is God's laws. Go to Romans chapter 7 and 14. So when you apply the commandment, when you apply the commandment, you, you're walking in the spirit. And you're resisting your flesh, your lust. That's you ruling your spirit. You're not taking, you're not taking heed to every emotion you feel. Read Romans that. chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. So when the scripture, when, excuse me, when Galatians say, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh, apply the commandments and you won't fulfill the lust of your flesh. Apply the commandments and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, while we here, jump to, uh, jump down. 19. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. So these, notice, these are grouped together. These are sexual sins. These are the lust of the flesh, adultery, fornication, adultery, sleeping, having sex outside of your marriage, fornication, sex before marriage. Sex with somebody that ain't your wife. Uncleanness. That's your pedophilia. Men sleeping with men. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Evil sexual desire. You can have sex with anything and everything that walk past your way. Read. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Idolatry and witchcraft. That's Christian. Another doctrine. Uh, Christianity. Idolatry. You make people your idol. Your car your idol. Yourself is your idol. You think you got it there. You think you think you got everything together. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You your God. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Variance is another word for division. You always you, you have a dividing spirit. Everything you do, you you trying to divide the body, divide the sisters, divide the brothers. Read. Emulation. Wrath. Strife. Sedition. Heresy. Another doctrine, read. Verse 21, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So the works of the flesh, is, this, is the, this is the works of the flesh. Do the opposite. Apply the commandments. Apply God's commandments and you're going to, not fulfill the lust of your flesh. And uh, go to James chapter 1 real quick. James chapter 1. Uh, 1 and I think so. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that no, in uh, 13. Verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. Uh -huh. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust 
and enticed. So you are tempted when you draw in the way of your own lust. Your own lust. If you have a sexual lust, that's your lust. That you have to build your spirit up so when that, that spirit rise up, you have to you have to be able to apply the commandment. You got to be able to apply the scripture. Walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit and you apply the commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You ain't going to be caught up in the midst of fornication or adultery. Love your neighbor as yourself. You're not going to be caught up in the midst of stealing, lying, causing division, gossiping. You're not going to be caught up in that because you're walking in the spirit. You're studying. You know your spirit. You know what your lust is. And you're studying the commandments that deal with your lust along with the rest of them. Because it's the, like uh, Christ said, when the spirit going out of a man, he come back with spirits, seven spirits worse than himself. So you got to study the, You got to study the whole Bible. But you know your lust. You know yourself. You still have to study a little bit more of those things you know is easy for you to fall into. Because that's your that's your lust. Read on. Verse 15. Verse 15. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. So it says, and when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. That means you were not ruling your spirit. That 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 sexual thought came and you just let it run wild. You didn't you didn't apply the scripture. You didn't meditate on the scripture. Or you just didn't have no scriptures in your arsenal. You was at work and you 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 see you've seen a multitude of women. You've seen you you you're in the midst of lust, but you don't got no ammo. You didn't load your gun before you left the house. You didn't prepare yourself. So the lust come and you have nothing to fight, fight off, fight it off with. You're not walking in the spirit. You can say when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Because now you done you done dwelled on that that sin. For so long, you let it take root in your mind, and now you're going you gonna to do it. Because as a man thinks, let's say in Proverbs, as a man thinks, so is he. Read. Verse 16. Oh, okay. All right. 15. The last half of 15. And sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. When you fall into that sin, it bring it forth death. The, the, sin, the wages of sin is death. From there, jump to 4 and 7. James chapter 4 and verse 7. James chapter 4 and verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So for you to, for you to rule your spirit, you have to submit yourselves to God. When you submit yourself to God, what are you doing? You're applying the commandments. And when, when that, don't, and, and trust me, if you, you've been here long enough, when that, that, when that lust arise, when that temptation arise, you feel like you can't. You feel like you can't apply the commandments because the pressure is there. But no, it's a resist. It's not going to be. A, it's not going to be easy. But you have to resist. You got to apply the commandments. Ruling your spirit is you applying the commandments. It says, "Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you." When you 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 keep applying the commandments, that spirit going it's going it's going to come back, but it's going to go away for a time. You just have to keep the commandments. Go to uh, Matthew chapter four, one. I mean Matthew chapter four. And see what Christ did. Because Christ left us an example how to resist the devil so he will flee from us. And this is how we rule our spirit. Matthew chapter four and verse one. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Uh huh. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights. He was afterward in hunger. Verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So Christ knew he was the son of God. He knew that he was sent by the Most High God. He knew he was the son of God. So let's see what he said. So he said, Command these stones to be made bread. Read. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So Christ showed us an example. When you tempt it, apply the commandments. Refer your refer back to what the commandments say. Read on. Verse 5. Then the devil taketh him into the holy city, and set of him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. And notice he said, if the when you when you notice all in all these these temptations, he says, if thou be the son of God. 
He putting this is doubt, casting doubt in his mind. Read. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. So he said, cast yourself down. Jump off this cliff. The most high going to catch you. He's going he to send his angels to catch you. Read. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And what did Jesus do? Read. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So you, you already know Christ was, was, he, he was equipped. To be able to fight off that temptation, to fight off that lust. Read. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get so thee hence, read Satan. That, read that, read that, uh, read that again. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. That lets you know right there. Just because somebody got, they, they, they got millions and billions. Just because Israel got that, they serving Satan. The Most High God ain't blessed them. They have, no matter how many times they go up and get that reward, that uh, award and say, yeah, I thank God. They thinking the devil. This, that, this lets you know that, that Satan got power to give people that wealth and all of that. So, nah, just because somebody, and that's, that goes back to what we were talking about with the respected person. Just because they got all that, that don't mean nothing. They, they, they uh, agents of Satan. Read. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So, it led, so, this, so Christ left us an example. The way you rule your spirit is applying the commandment. You always make reference back to what the commandments tell us to do. And then go to, let's jump over to Luke chapter 4 and 13. Luke chapter 4 and verse 13. And then we're going to close out with this. Luke chapter 4 and verse 13. And when the devil had ended the temptation, he departed from him for a season. So when we get tempted and then that, 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 that pressure Ease up after you apply the commandments, you still study. You got to continue to study. You got to continue to study. Continue to study. So because that it says he departed from him for a season, meaning he was coming back. That's the same with us. Our lust rise. Whatever, whatever your lust is, if it's, if, it's, if you got a covetous spirit, if you got a, 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 a malicious spirit, you got an evil thinking spirit, you got you, you evil surmised, whatever spirit it is, it's not going to be like that all the time. You're not going to always be like that. You're going to have ups and downs. But when that spirit rises up, you got to be able to apply the commandments. You have to already have scriptures in your arsenal. You should have been already studying scriptures, dealing with that spirit. So when that spirit rises up, you apply the commandments. You apply what the commandments say for you to do. Because when, it, when, you, when, when you pass that test, that was going to depart for a season. That, that little, that lust of yours is going to depart for a season, and then it's going to rise back up. And what you think is going to come when it come, when it come back, what you think? It's going to come stronger. So you have to continue to study. You got to continue to build your spirit up. So as that spirit come back, you con it's, a continual, it's a continual battle until Christ come back. We're going to be fighting off our lust. So that's how you rule your spirit. You have to apply the commandments. You got to study the scriptures that deal with your lust. You got to know yourself. Know what your weaknesses is, study the scriptures that pertain to that, and apply them when your lust come and uh, uh, attack you, so to say. All right, we're going to close out with that. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, 
These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.